Welcome to our service this morning from St Lawrence Gatling for the second Sunday before Lent. Come and worship Christ, the visible image of the invisible God, the firstborn of creation, the eternal God, the one through whom all things were created and in whom all things are held together. This is our God. Let's worship together. We say together, Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First hymn is Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Human sin disfigures the whole creation which groans with eager longing for God's redemption. And so we confess our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away, and to cleanse our lips to speak your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life, in Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the Collect for today. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. Our reading is taken from Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. The section is entitled, The Person and Work of Christ. Christ is the visible likeness of the invisible God. He is the firstborn Son, superior to all created things. For through him, God created everything in heaven and on earth, the seen and the unseen things, including spiritual powers, lords, rulers and authorities. God created the whole universe through him and for him. Christ existed before all things and in union with him all things have their proper place. He is the head of his body, the church. He is the source of the body's life. He is the firstborn son who was raised from death in order that he alone might have the first place in all things. For it was by God's own decision that the Son has in himself the full nature of God. Through the Son, then, God decided to bring the whole universe back to himself. God made peace through his Son's death on the cross, and so brought back to himself all things, both on earth and in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Our second hymn is Be Thou My Vision. The reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. The section is entitled, The Word of Life. Before the world was created, the Word already existed. He was with God, and he was the same as God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to mankind. The light shines in the darkness, 
and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light, so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light, he came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on all mankind. The word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognise him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him, so he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was the father. The word became a human being and, full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the father's only son. This is the word of the Lord. Please read Jim's reflection on Jesus, the light of the world, which you'll find on the website near the hymns for today. Let us declare together our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Intercessions for February the 7th, 2020. Let us pray to God that the church and the world shall be governed according to his will. Teach us, Lord, to live in harmony and love with the environment and those around us. We pray for the governments of the world and all world leaders that they may uphold what is right for union between nations. Where there is strife, we pray that you bring peace. Where there is oppression, we pray that you bring reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our troubled world, distressed by wars and fears of war and the continuing uncertainty brought by the coronavirus. We pray that you bring peace and reconciliation, give calm to the angry and courage to the fearful. We pray that you look after anyone touched by the pandemic. We ask that you unite all people in compassion for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body or spirit. In a moment of silence, let us bring to the Lord those we are concerned about. We pray for your healing touch upon them and wisdom and kindness for all who care for them. On a personal note, I will be praying for a family friend, Chris Harris, who is currently suffering from coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, this morning, Lord, we pray for all those who have died, especially those who were near and dear to us. We pray that they rest in the peace and tranquility of your presence. Give us the reassurance that one day we too will join them in the joy of heaven and eternal life forever with you. Give us the strength to face the days without loved ones, knowing that they are always with us in spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is Christ Triumphant, Ever Reigning. We say together this prayer of thanksgiving for creation. This is your garden, creator God, a thing of beauty beyond understanding, a poem that is being written not in words, but in colours, winds whisper, soaring bird, snowdrops petal, gentle rain, sunlight's warmth. This is your garden, creator God, a thing of beauty beyond understanding, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Spirit of God, who is above all and in all and through all, fill you with the knowledge of God's presence on earth and with the joy of Christ within you and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you, those you love and those you pray for, today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.